There's a reason why we often use the phrase young and dumb. Part of being a person is that we often make dumb mistakes, more often while we're young and haven't learned the painful consequences of our actions. This is why adolescents are often given more lenient penalties for crimes they commit. Unfortunately, children can sometimes make life-altering and fatal choices, not only for themselves, but also for innocent victims. Depending on who you ask, more lenient penalties can cause extra trauma to a family member involved, especially when a death occurred. On the flip side, more lenient penalties can give an individual, especially when young, a chance to change their life around and be involved in the community again. Today, we will be discussing the short but sad case of Muhammad Anwar, a family man taken too soon by young and dumb kids who weren't thinking of the consequences of their actions. For today's case, we will be going to Washington, D.C., the capital city of the United States. Specifically, we will be looking at the Navy Yard neighborhood, located in the southeast of the city. But first, let's go to Springfield, Virginia, the place Mohammed Anwar first immigrated to in 2014 from Pakistan. Mohammed Anwar was a 61-year-old Pakistan family man with a kind heart. After working in Kuwait, a country in Western Asia, for many years to support his family in Pakistan, he immigrated to the United States in 2014 to chase the American dream. Mohammed's wife came with him to the United States, and his children and grandchildren stayed back in Pakistan, which Mohammed made sure to call them at least once a day. He was the supporting member for the family and was loved by everyone who knew him. Everything was going great for the family, and Mohammed was out chasing the American dream. However, in 2021, tragedy struck. March 23, 2021 was a warm, sunny day in Washington, D.C. However, the COVID pandemic was just starting to be in full force. Mohammed was out in the Navy Yard doing his job, delivering food using the app Uber Eats in his gray sedan, when two teenage girls, ages 13 and 15, decided they were going to carjack someone, and Mohammed happened to be that person. Armed with stun guns, the two girls, not even old enough to drive, jumped into his sedan and began to take off down the 1200 block of Van Street. At this time, Mohammed decided to grab onto the driver's side door to stop them from taking his car. However, this is when the driver decided to take off, taking Mohammed along for the deadly ride. While the girls were driving, Mohammed was holding onto the car, stuck between the driver's side door and the driver's seat, struggling to get them to stop the car. The teenage girl driver, being an inexperienced driver, decided to take a hard right turn down a side street, losing control and unfortunately flipping the car over onto its side. When the car flipped over, Mohammed was thrown out of the car and was crushed. Soon after, the girls got out of the car, where fortunately for them, the National Guard was right there at the time of the incident, and they were able to help out. Cell phone video was shot by a witness who was on N Street, which shows the car speeding off crashing, and shows the aftermath. Mohammed can be seen laying on the sidewalk while the National Guard troops pull the girls out of the flipped car. The two girls instantly lied to all the bystanders around, telling them that the car belonged to them and not to Mohammed, and one of the girls can even be heard asking where her phone was, while Mohammed was in a critical state. The video I'm going to show you can be hard to watch. If you don't want to watch it, you can skip ahead now. It's 
It's been called. It's been called. They stole the car. These girls stole the car. Mohammed was taken to the hospital, where he later passed away. The girls were soon detained at the scene and taken in. They were both charged the same day with felony murder and carjacking. Because the two girls, 15 and 13, were too young to film, they were not able to film the courtroom. However, news reporters were able to be there on the grounds that the personal information of the minors was not disclosed to the public. Both of the girls originally pleaded not involved, which is the juvenile equivalent to not guilty. The public was calling for the two girls to be charged as adults. However, the District of Columbia law prohibits 13-year-olds and younger from being charged as adults. The prosecutors of this case also did not indicate a desire for the 15-year-old girl to be tried as an adult. The DC Attorney's Office could have petitioned for the 15-year-old girl to be tried as an adult, however, this would have typically taken place during the first hearing and did not. The two girls were offered plea bargains, allowing them to plead guilty to felony murder in exchange for dismissing the other charges. On May 11, 2021, the 15-year-old girl accepted the plea bargain. She received the maximum sentence allowed by the city law, which meant she would be turned into the care of a youth agency until she was deemed rehabilitated or reached age 21. Soon after, on June 3, 2021, the 13-year-old girl accepted the plea deal as well, and received the same sentence. During the sentencing, Muhammad's daughter can be heard saying, You did not kill one person that day, you killed the whole family. The older teen apologized to the family, briefly stating, No matter how much stuff I've been through, I would never intentionally murder someone. She later said to the judge, I never meant to do it, and I promise I will change. A GoFundMe page was set up for the Anwar family, raising a little over $1 million, to help them financially and to provide a traditional Islamic funeral for Muhammad. Unlike many people who make a terrible mistake like this one, for good or for bad, these two teens will get off with a very light sentence, considering it costs someone their brother, husband, and father. Let's just hope that the two teen girls can turn their life around like intended, and let's hope they don't fall down the constant revolving cycle that we call jail.